After weeks of back and forth negotiations on the American Jobs Plan, you had to laugh when President Biden nearly flushed it all down the toilet during a press conference that was meant to celebrate progress and bipartisanship. Last Thursday, five Republicans and five Democrats came together to announce a $973 billion framework for that bill. Now, that doesn't mean a done deal. There are still negotiations to be made and a vote to be had. But it was huge progress. It's more than Republicans would like to spend. It's less than Democrats wanted to spend. The potential deal was a rare moment of traction for a very divided Congress and very divided country. When the headline broke, it was really big news. I got it on my phone. I said, wow, it surprised me. And then for some bizarre reason, President Biden came out and pretty much ruined everything. Today is a huge day for one half of my economic agenda, the American Jobs Plan. But I'm getting to work with Congress right, right away on the other half of my economic agenda as well. And I'm going to work closely with Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer to make sure that both move through the legislative process promptly and in tandem. Let me emphasize that. And in tandem. So why were we negotiating? Biden knew the far left would be enraged if he just signed off on this infrastructure bill after giving some, a lot of stuff up. He tried to make everybody happy all at once. It was a disaster, with Biden saying he's not signing any straight infrastructure plan without all the other socialist goodies Democrats have been trying to brand as human infrastructure for the past few months tied directly to it, basically all in the same bill, except not. Basically like listing your house for $500,000, accepting somebody's offer for four hundred and fifty, dollars and then immediately saying you'll only accept four fifty dollars if you get the other $50,000 at closing. Okay. It was a really confusing moment for a president who's confused pretty much all the time. And here's more. You said you uh, want both of these measures to come to you in tandem. Did you receive any assurances that that will happen? And how do you anticipate what will you do? I can tell that. If they don't come, I'm not signing. Real simple. And there you have it. No deal. My way or the highway. I'm getting it all or nothing. Progressives would breathe a sigh of relief, and the 10 senators who just spent all that time making the deal are left wondering what the hell just happened. The human infrastructure that we were just talking about, human infrastructure, is trillions more in spending on things like child care, home care, free community college, bunch of money towards climate change, electric cars, all that good stuff. A million new ways to get more Americans dependent on the federal government, of course. Things Republicans would never agree on. The Washington Post reporting GOP senators furious over Biden pledge tying infrastructure bill to huge Democratic package. Senator Lindsey Graham called it a deal by extortion. Brian Reidel, a former aide to Senator Rob Portman, said, moderate Republicans had an understanding that they were scaling down the cost of the final deal, not simply transferring that cost to a second bill, obviously. Over the weekend, the Biden communications team scrambled to recover the infrastructure deal, releasing this statement on behalf of the president. Quote, my comments also created the impression that I was issuing a veto threat on the very plan I had just agreed to, which was certainly not my intent. Well, the comments didn't create an impression, sir. They were just taken exactly at face value. We listened to exactly what you said. You said something, it blew up in your face, and now you're flip-flopping. That's the truth. For Democrats, they're realizing this is the moment. This is going to be the moment to push through this agenda that they want to push through. They have a lot of stuff they want to do. They got all the power right now. They want to embrace that. They realize next November they're losing either the House or the Senate, and very good chance they lose both. The problem is they can't get around or get rid of this pesky filibuster. Ending a filibuster requires 60 votes in the Senate, something Democrats long supported when they were in the minority. But now, of course, that they are the majority, it must be removed for the sake of the entire nation, obviously. And we do have to give out some props here to the Washington Post for actually putting this together. Take a look. I hope the Republican leader and I can, in the coming months, find a way to build a firewall around the legislative filibuster. When you were in the minority, you joined plenty of efforts to filibuster legislation. The big difference is that we were always willing to negotiate in a bipartisan way. Mitch McConnell isn't. No, I'm not crazy about getting rid of the filibuster. At the end of the day, we have to end the filibuster. It's always this. Whether you're talking about immigration, voting rights, filibuster, these people believe nothing that they say. They do whatever they got to do to win. Listen to AOC try to build a narrative around this. 
Why defend a 60-vote filibuster when the Senate already amplifies right. a minority power so that the 50 Democratic senators already represent millions and millions and millions more Americans right. than 50 Republican senators? And so I would argue that 50 Republican senators is already a built-in kind of filibuster-esque firewall. Chuck Todd agrees with everything you just said. Uh, and just wait until Democrats are in the minority again, by the way. Then we'll hear what they really think about the filibuster. Removing the filibuster would, of course, be the end of bipartisanship in this country as we know it. Luckily, two Democrats, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, who are very popular right now, are not going to let it happen. They realize how bad that would be. They're in a tough spot, though, as well. Here's Senator Manchin facing pressure from Jonathan Carl on ABC. What do you say to those that say, why don't you draw some bread lines with Republicans? Why don't you say, unless they come around and agree to the stuff you just talked about, you know, bringing up the corporate tax rate again, some of the other issues, maybe voting rights, some of the other issues uh, that, that, that Republicans are blocking, why don't you draw a red line and say, look, if you guys don't move on this, I'm going to go and uh, endorse doing away with the filibuster. So what Jonathan Carl is not really talking about here and what the truth is, is that Joe Manchin is a Democrat in a blood red state. It's just the facts. It's the way it is. He's really kind of more Republican than a Democrat, if we're being honest. And if it's not him in that seat, it will be a Republican instead. You can count on that. Kristen Sinema from Arizona also facing tremendous pressure from left wing activists to change her stance on this thing as well. Doesn't that look fun? Right outside of her office. If the Senate goes to simple majority, bipartisanship again dies forever. And there will be wild policy swings every time one side regains power from the other. It's not really a good way to run the country. Just to remind you of what Democrats are trying to attach to the infrastructure bill, here's Jen Psaki earlier today talking about all of those climate change goodies. 500,000 electric vehicle charging stations nationwide. That's what this would help support with a focus on our highways and rural and disadvantaged communities. Rural and disadvantaged communities all clamoring for charging stations for their Teslas. You know they are. I see so many Teslas every time I'm in Nebraska. Out of Touch doesn't even begin to describe what they're talking about here, of course. And it's always amazing to hear comments like that and then also hear a comment like this from Democrats. We know Republicans care more about, you know, uh, bridges than they do about people. We know that they really are not prepared to, to, to help in the human infrastructure, but we will not budge if they're not willing to compromise. It is not bipartisan if Republicans don't give an inch, and they have given nothing here. Nothing. No, Republicans have given up quite a bit, actually, jumping up quite a bit from uh, half a trillion, which is what they initially wanted to spend on infrastructure, to closer to a trillion. Democrats, like her, are just enraged that the GOP didn't happily accept their hilarious attempt to redefine infrastructure into essentially anything that they want, human infrastructure. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.